Hey folks, Flip here, and welcome on back to Hardcore in 1.17. Oh my gosh, I'm so very excited to be working on this place here again today. Thank you all so very much for the support on last episode, where we started this brand new diamond mine with access to get all of the brand new 1.17 blocks. We've got a dam up there, we've got T sitting right here, our new goat friend, and oh my gosh, it's all looking so cool, and a completely failed attempt at fighting a wither last time. Yeah, that all kind of happened, then I almost died definitely almost died in the last episode too a lot of things happened i guess speaking of, yeah a lot of things seem to have happened in the last episode but yeah that right there little creeper guy oh my gosh but what i would love to do today my friends is have you all subscribe and click the like button but actually though i would love to be able to clean up this area quite a lot get a new place for t to be hanging out and bring a few other goat friends over i'm thinking we can have a nice little goat pasture on the edge of the hill right over there somewhere where they won't really be able to jump out too easily I don't know, I feel like keeping these guys tamed inside of a pasture is gonna be really hard because they jump like five blocks high in the sky. So that's kind of a pain in the butt. Between episodes, I harvested up a bunch more gunpowder by staying awake at night and killing creepers. Yeah, it was super fun. But what I wanted to do is coming down to this layer here is it's time to do a little bit of strip mining and checking to see if we can maybe find an amethyst geode or something like that, because why the heck not? I've been doing some research and I found that if you get all the way up to level 48 and level 49 being this upper block right here, that is prime drop locations for copper. So I wanted to create an area inside of this large mine that we have down here, just like a some sort of a rampart section going all the way down around here so we can have a circle that we can stand on and mine off in these ways to have an upper strip mining section where we're going to be looking for all of our lovely copper bits. Oh, hey, we finally found some. Look at that. I told you optimal levels right here. We've only went that far to find the copper. Oh, it's totally fine. We did find a cave back here, though. Wait, that could be kind of useful. Let's explore this guy a touch. I'm, I'm kind of in the mood. We've been doing so much endgame stuff in here recently, and now we have all of this new stuff to start ourselves out with all of the new blocks and everything, exploring new places, and it's just so fun to be able to do that. So I'm going to gather up as much of the copper as you can, and maybe we fly through the cave here for a touch. I really should have brought more torches. I only have like 40 on me right now, so this is uh, not the best. Not the best situation for me over here, my friends. We are already almost out, so this caving adventure could be a little short, but we've got some more dripstone up here. Perfect. Those are the little guys I need, so we can get more of the spikes growing i believe it does also have to grow from this block too so we'll bring it along and there goes the last torch and we did not make it very far at all down here nothing really at the end of that one though okay let's see can i maybe scrounge together a few more out of the stuff i have in here this is about to be the most expensive caving adventure i've ever done because we're going to be using lanterns to light our way now oh good job me great job it looks like we found a way back above ground over here, which is pretty sweet. I'm starting to run a little low on the lanterns, and there's a village. Wait. We're going right back in that cave here in just a minute. Where are we? Excuse me. There's the mountains. Is this our spot right here? How did I settle right here and start building? I didn't even bother to looking over the other side that has a village. A really big village, too. How did I miss this? I, I, I don't know. I don't know how I missed it, but there's a lot of free stuff we can take. Back down into the caves we go and we're quickly dropping. All right, what's up this way? Oh, maybe we've been up, there's torches. Oh, it looks like it's that spot that I sealed. The, the river is right above us right there. Yep, there's a little bit of water dropping down. Oh my God, is it? Is this one? Wait, 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 wait. The, this, there's the calcite, there's the basalt. <gasps> I think we found one. I think we found an amethyst geode. Yes, we did. It's right there. Oh. Listen to that beautiful sound. It's amazing. Look at this. That's amazing. Oh my God. These things are beautiful. Lit up the caves around us a touch more so we could go in safely. And I don't think there's any mobs. I do know that they can spawn inside of it. So it's something we have to be very careful of. But look at this. Oh my gosh. These crystals. Oh, they're so cool. Can I still touch them? Oh, I can. Amethyst clusters. Can I put it on any block? <gasps> no. No. Yes. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, I love it. Oh, I'm so happy right now, everybody. Oh, even more copper. Look at that. That right there. That right there is beautiful. Look at that. Oh my gosh. These geodes are amazing. 
All right, I've had my screenshot moment. Let's take the crystals with us because why not? Oh, we're gonna have to keep in mind of this one. I must see what way are we, for... I've gotta figure out where we are in relation to our new mine because I would love to connect it up. It looks like you can silk touch them in different sizes. So the large amethyst bud and the amethyst crystal. So I'm gonna leave the bud back in there so it can grow up a touch further, but they should just naturally generate off of these guys. If you're new to this stuff and you're not too familiar with the 117, if you find amethyst geode, do not break this block or that one. Anything that has that little X in it for the darker color, don't break those. Those are the only things that spawn crystals and there's no way to get them back. Even with Silk Touch, you cannot pick it up. I don't want to disturb this geode because I think it'd be really beautiful leave as is and turn into a farm for ourselves. But oh my gosh, I want the calcite. <laughs> I think we cracked into the geode a little bit up there, so we'll have we'll just leave that hole inside of it. But I think what I can do is west, I believe, is where the hole's going to be. So if we dig our way this way just a touch and maybe try and dig a tunnel out, we might be able to hit our weird chasm that we've made. And there we go. We've linked it up, and we're almost at that perfect position. Oh, my gosh. Are we exactly centered? Oh, that's going to be amazing. I'm thinking what we could do here. I know, a little bit of a side project, but I want to create a little bit of a minecart track that can take us all the way down from that end to down here. I'm just having fun exploring the caves, and that's kind of what I'm really want to be doing right now because, oh, it's so cool. Oh, it looks so good. Mm, I can't wait. Landing down here on the little lift, we can see that we've got that section right there, which is where our railroad's going to go to get ourselves back to the Amethyst Geode. Then we've got this big old section, T... Don't you dare fall in here. Come on now. But we've got this big old section up here, which I love with the stone. But I was thinking about at this layer, down all the way to where we bring the ring inwards, I want to turn that into a dripstone cavern. And then bringing the deep slate coming all the way from there up to the top of this and kind of having the mesh in the middle, maybe with the, like some tough layers in between, I think could be absolutely beautiful. So I was thinking that little terrible uh, dripstone farm that we built over there, before we built this cavern, just so I can actually start getting something moving, I think I'm gonna dig this area back out over here and start a new dripstone farming area. Apparently we didn't have a full powered beacon last time, but we definitely do now. So we've got a lot of digging to do here, my friends. I brought over a lot of new wooden stuff so we can do some building with it. So I gotta find a place to stash it all for now. But my friends, I'm thinking this is a great time to do a time lapse. So let's go ahead and kick this off in a good old fashioned Time, oh, no, fly, 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 fly. Time lapse mode. You know, I thought during that time lapse, I spent probably about an hour and a half or so digging out areas, getting things ready, and uh, trying to get some dripstone production rocking so we could move into building this actual cavern over here, which I've got a great idea for now, and I love how much we've cleared it out now, but I finished the time lapse, and I've now spent four hours watching dripstone drip to grow and then place it back on the ceiling in different spots so I can slowly expand the farm coming down this way and have more and more of it growing. Holy cow, this is taking forever. <laughs> but what I figured could be a great idea to do for now is at least expand this room so I can get a full production that I want to, and maybe we can get a flying machine hooked up that'll auto harvest it for us so that I don't have to be catching it quite as often. I'll be honest, I really thought I could get this whole project done today for this whole dripstone farm and get the cave rocking, but it's just gonna require so much more AFK time or just mining around the world trying to get starter dripstone points. What is that? Oh, it's copper. Hi, copper. But I wanna make sure this thing is actually pretty long. Right now it's 15 blocks wide, which would be the max push width that we can get off of a flying machine, sending some slime blocks flying all the way down this way. And I was able to verify off of a Raiseworks video that you can use flying machines to chop off the bottoms of dripstone pointed or pointed dripstones, which is gonna be awesome. So we can at least utilize that. For a point of reference here, my friends, the entire time that I have dug from where that torch is placed all the way back to here to clear out this much extra space to the farm, which I hope is going to be the full size that we're using, we grew one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's it. We grew six more dripstone. <laughs> Just for point of reference over here, when we started today's videos, our netherite pickaxe usage count was down in the 20,000s. It was about 26,000. We've mined 21,000 blocks today. 
That is almost half of what I've used in the entirety time of having diamond pickaxes and pretty much doubling what we've had with netherite. <laughs> oh, it's been a big day of digging. Oh no, T, what did you do, T? T, T, we talked about this. We talked about not doing that. You're gonna hang out there for a little while, okay? I will rescue you later. In my sleepy, crazed state that I've been messing around with Dripstone constantly, um, I accidentally forgot to stop playing a little bit of music, so if there's no game sounds in the last few clips, I'm very sorry about that. T here is still chilling, but I've got a few things set up down here that's doing great. I've been expanding the farm a lot more, and I've even got a flying machine set up over here. Kudos to Raceworks for the design on this one, and it is looking fantastic. So it'll go all the way down there. Anything that grows about three blocks long on the Dripstone will be chopped off, and ready to go, so we can pick it all up down there at the bottom. Eventually, I'll get this entire thing filled out. Last time we talked, we were about here, and it's been another hour and a half, and we're out to here. So I think I'm just gonna leave it as we're working in the area, which, speaking of which, my friends, is gonna be an absolutely awesome time here, where I wanna go ahead and sort out that mountain lake. Let's go ahead for the second time in today's video, kicking this off into good old-fashioned time-lapse mode before we jump back over to working on a lovely little farming village. And there we go, my friends. Axolotl Lake, the little lake in the mountains is now completed and I love it so very much. I do wanna come back here and terraform the area around it to make it a little bit better and actually clean up this stuff right over here because right now it's a wall of stone. Kinda wanna add another waterfall in there but I don't want my axolotls to get out because we're gonna be releasing these dudes up here. Check this out, we got a lot of awesome ones in there. So we got a brown one, his name is Ben. We got Ben over there. Right here, we've got a little blue guy, or a white guy. I think that's a white one. Apparently, they're pretty rare. Where are you guys going? Please don't run out of this area. That'd be fantastic. And here, we've got a yellow guy. He's pretty cool. We've got another yellow guy. We've got another brown guy. He is um, Jerry. Ben. We have Ben and Jerry, because they both look like cookie dough. And then here, we have, another, we have a pink one, and I love them. They're all so adorable. Look at them. Look at that dude zooming over there. The little white one's just like, I love this lake. I've never had so much space in my life inside of a cave. I know typically they have a lot of shaded areas or in Minecraft's sake, they live underground, but I think it's gonna be absolutely awesome having them up here. I wanna build a few trees overhanging this area that are gonna cover the lake and we can build out these cliffs a little bit better, but that's kind of something I'm working on on streams for now because I would like to jump back over to the farming village and get a little bit more work done there. Oh, hey, look, more junk in my inventory. A little bit of an update here on the creeper farm section. I spent another long stream trying to get this thing sorted out and holy cow, is it a pain in the butt to find caverns inside of hardcore mode. We've got two big ravines right over there that we filled in and as I think I still need to tackle some more caves around here, but everything else around us is lit up and ready to go. Full on honesty throughout this one, I think being able to use a spectator type system in order to find where caves are that you need to light up for say a mob farm or in this case the creeper farm for me that is 100 percent a-okay and within the realm of what i think is acceptable inside of a game so i've been using the replay mod footage system which allows you to basically move a camera around in the sky like we're over here where I can pick the points to then do the time lapsey builds, make it all look super duper pretty. Long story short is I decided to use that to fly underground to actually see like the network of caverns that I had left because the creeper farm just refused to work. So I think I've actually gotten something pretty well sorted over there and I think we might be able to get some decent gunpowder now. Still a lot more improvements to make and we found our first emerald ore, which is amazing. But inside of here, do I have any copper? We have 60 copper ore right there. Okay, that's gonna help us out. And I think back over Unfortunately, at the place I just left, there might be some more copper. We have 60 blocks of copper ore on us right here, and I've got a Fortune 3 pickaxe, so I'm really curious to know how much we can get. I was hoping to build a small little roof for a new farming building out here with some copper, but if we don't really have enough, probably won't be able to make it happen. But I was thinking a cool granary area right back in here and adding a big old wheat field around it could be quite fun to add on to the element that we have with the windmill up there. We can also have a grain storage silo. I think that could set the scene nice around here. Ooh, it is getting to be nighttime and I have not slept for a very long time. Phantoms might be coming out. Let's go down very quickly now. Made it and we've got a few stacks of copper. I'm gonna smelt all this down. I don't know if it's nine ingots or if it's only four to make a block. I'm really it's four but i'm not holding my breath on this one 
With all that copper smelting down, it is nine ingots per block of the stuff. So we were able to get up to 38 blocks and we got five more copper ingots here, which I always think is a great way to go with making our first spyglass right over there. Look at how beautiful that thing is. And I definitely want a lightning rod too, because look at how cool of a building block that is. Oh, it's so fun. You can turn it any way you want it. It's so awesome. Does it turn sideways? It does. Oh, it's great. And of course, naturally, we have to look at our bees. Oh, we have to start dealing with them soon. Wait, we can get candles. Nope, nope, stop being distracted, Flip. Stop being distracted. We've got a job to do. We've got a granary to build. I did find a bunch more copper back over at the last place, so I did bring it over here. And I realized you can smelt it in a blast furnace, so that's super awesome. So uh, these are all smelting down slowly, and then we'll get moving. But I did find 10 more diamond ore for mining out everything which is gonna result in a lovely amount of diamonds right over here, 27 more diamonds for ourselves. We are up to 35 blocks and 40 diamonds. That is slowly grown, ooh, it's gonna be good. I can't wait to keep mining around and getting so many more of those. But I will be honest, the Grims or the Deep Slate, I keep wanting to call it Grimstone. It was named that for like a week. The Deep Slate Diamond Ore, I don't even want to mine it. It just looks too good. I know we don't have Optifine Zoom right now, but this is the best we can get. And look at it, it is all of the entities don't render in, but oh, the castle. The castle's amazing. So I've wanted to turn this area back here into a nice rolling hill so it follows along with the little path that we have there and then also linking it up to this far side over here. And are you an untamed wolf? Hi, how you doing? Nice to see you, nice to meet you. Welcome to the neighborhood, my friend. Please don't eat my sheepies. But we've got this other pathway right over here, which I think could be really cool. It was supposed to go off this way and then uh, the, the potatoes happened, everybody. The potatoes happened and stopped where the pathway was gonna go. But we've got that lovely structure up there with a little bit of granite in the roof. And I think with the acacia on top, one thing that could look very cool is if we bring a little bit of the copper in here. We haven't done any building on camp for a little while here, so I figured this could be kind of fun to do today and see where we can go with this one. But I was thinking we get up to about the four tall height and then we bring everything across here. I want to make it feel like we have a nice area that you could go up in and actually storing all of the hay and everything like that off of the ground because otherwise the critters are going to be able to get inside of it. That'll work out fantastic. And that was thinking about we move up into the strip spruce wood and bringing this up three blocks high here as well. And we can bring this out into these lovely little corner bits where we can have some of this calcite and polished diorite out over here. I think it could be very cool. It's going to be quite bright, I will be honest, but I think it could work out really well. I don't have too much of the stuff. So I think we gotta do something like that. We're gonna have a doorway coming up here into the front, but I think this is a pretty good start. It looks a little uh, wonky for sure, but I think coming down here and adding in a little bit of the stair action and then some fences, we can really thicken up the base of this one. That right there is looking a little bit better already. Uh, it's a little stout though, I'll be honest. I think we need to have a definitely have a second layer on this one. And in order to save on a lot of the copper resources that we have right now, I'm thinking that we go with a trim on the roof using some spruce wood, and then we'll know how much copper we're actually gonna need. But I think having a cool little staircase like this coming all the way down to the ground can be kind of a fun way to get up into the building. And then I was thinking we might actually retrofit, uh, one, we need a floor in here. This entire side right there, I thought would be really cool to open up even further. So actually getting a little bit of the calcite blocks back for ourselves, we can open this up into a little bit of a loft entrance. So we can have a big beam coming out that would have some crane structure on it, just adding some movement and life into this one as a way that we can get some things inside of here. This roof section here hopefully shouldn't be too intensive on the copper out. We're going with the double sl thick slabs going all the way around. And I actually need to come back down here and see if I can't clean this corner up just a touch. I think having a bit of a thicker line along the top using a lot more of the strip log action than having really this calcite stuff could look pretty cool and have a good contrast to it. And will actually help the copper roof shine a lot more. Might require a little bit more copper, but I think it'd be really cool. So in this case, let's go ahead and bring the dark oak back in because it'll be a little bit on the darker side. And that brings us all the way to this point. And I was thinking it'd be kind of fun to incorporate some oak fences so we could have some airflow going through this place instead of having the classic windows. So I wanted to have them going all the way around. But then over on this side here, we're gonna run into a little bit of an issue because as mentioned, I wanna have that lift because we're not on the ground level. So we need to have some way of getting things above here off ground. So I think I'm just gonna extend this guy out probably yeah that should be about good for the distance out here since we did use the slabs down below it couldn't hurt to do that same pattern up here again and actually i can raise this up one more block 
And here we go, right in the center. This is where I was thinking it'd be super fun to bring ourselves all the way up like that and take this lightning rod that I crafted up and have him sticking right here. So we have a little bit of a point to this top one. I don't know if it actually works or not for anything or if it's just going to encourage some lightning to strike here. It could be kind of funny to have. Going to try and be very sparing on this stuff and actually going to have it sticking up an extra block above where we had the stuff below us with the little wood trim. So it does pop just a touch more, but I think it's going to be really cool. Definitely took a majority of what we have, but right now, how does this look? I really like that. That is so fun. Oh, copper's going to be such a fun color to work with if we can get a half decent amount of it. I think I want to rework the top section just a touch in here, but we might need just a tiny bit more copper. It does make a really satisfying sound when you place it, though. I will say that much. I'm going to move this guy here in the center up just one more so we don't have any issues with it, and it should be really solid. Oh, that's looking really promising. Okay, let me just spend a bit of time tweaking this thing and get it to more finalized state, and I'll be right back with y'all. I've got to say, folks, I've realized one of the biggest changes ever in 1.17 that's going to open up so many doors is not all of the brand new building blocks, but look at this right here. Dirt block, path block. Oh, it's so good. We can finally just, instead of having to have grass grow over first and then do all the path blocks, just do it straight away. I'll get the rest of this little pathway here sorted out soon, but check this area out. I'm absolutely loving it. I brought in a few stone retaining walls over here so we could kind of break things up so it's not quite as flat and boring. And we've got this little one started right over here too, which I'm really, really liking. But this structure is coming along very, very well with my floating shulker boxes over there. But these guys are very cool. Also, fence gates can now be placed on path block without ruining the path block. So that's pretty fun. But I got the new arm built up over here, hoisting up all of those hay bales. And then on the inside, I added a few hay bales with a little bit of light source in here too. So it's super, super cool. We got the cart out in front and I'm really liking it. I think it's working out very well for the build out here, but I'll tell you what, my friends, I've still got a lot of decoration work to do and doing all the decor and all that stuff. So let's go ahead and kick this into montage mode. I tried to do a zoom there. I don't have a zoom yet. Hi. I feel like these last two episodes on the hardcore world have turned into look at this beautiful block and how cool it is and it's brand new and oh my god I love it so much but look at this beautiful block and how cool it is and oh my god I love it so much here we have rooted dirt and the rooted roots hanging off the bottom of it well hanging roots that makes a lot more sense than rooted roots hanging off the bottom of it but it's beautiful and check this thing out right here we also have rooted dirt oh it's gonna be so beautiful look at this thing next to coarse dirt though that right there is so fun. It's going to be so good to have with like regular dirt and everything. It is a pain in the butt in 1.17 to grow though. Holy cow. It grows at the bottom of one of these azalea trees. Just the grass block below it gets turned into rooted dirt. So um, that's going to be pretty precious unless there's an easy way to farm it. But check this dude out up here. We've got our first ever custom azalea tree for the world that I've actually ever built. And I love it. We've got this lovely, lovely wheat field right over here that's grown up super nice, and I love how large it is and just kind of filling the whole hillside. This little spot right here, viewing towards the castle, I love using the tree here as a way to block the sight line. So you're kind of wandering along this way, you see the castle, you go towards it, gets a little blocked right there, well, completely at this point, then again reveals itself even further, and oh, it's so good. So, so good coming all the way up here. Then we get the grand reveal. I'm thinking we can add some more trees and things along the way. 
But let me show you more of what I've done as well, where I brought in those small drip leaves that we found last time and decided to transform this little pond down here, which is super duper cool and I love it. Started growing some jungle trees so I could harvest some more leaves that I gotta get around to and I need to terraform that section. I just don't know quite what I wanna do yet. You think I should bring it to a cliff edge and have it overhanging down or should, hey Wolfie, how you doing? Uh, or should we just like smooth the hill out and bring it down this way? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. But I started working a little bit here, smoothing it out. And I was like, I have no idea. And it's raining. So I held off on that one. But the way that we can get more of these little hanging roots down here is by bone mealing the bottom of that dude, breaking it, bone mealing, breaking, bone mealing, breaking, bone mealing, breaking. That's how we can get pretty much unlimited of the little hanging roots. And I think that's gonna be awesome. I think we could set up a farm with that. We could probably use a dispenser here because by hand is really gonna suck with that. But I was able to get 13 of them. So that's super sweet. I actually broke one with a hand there, but that is absolutely amazing. Thank you all so very much for watching today's episode. That is gonna have to do it here, my friends. Please be sure to click that like button down below if you have not already. And a little bit of an update regarding the merch because I didn't mention it at the beginning of this episode. There's a wee bit of a problem right now with shipping to the US. It is a lot more expensive than I was told it was going to be. I'm actively working with the merch company here as much as I can to get that resolved. So everybody who's been messaging me, I do appreciate it. I'm trying to get this resolved as quickly as I can and I will be sure to extend it so there's a lot more time for people to get their hands on it as soon as this issue here is fixed. But I didn't feel like it was right to be promoing it all over the place when it's uh, not the way that I want it to be and everything like that. So if I went kind of hush-hush after the last video, I do apologize for it. That is why I'm actively working on fixing this thing. But that is it from me here today, folks. Click that subscribe button if you're brand new and you're still listening to me ramble. Thanks, I'd very much appreciate that. But anyways, with that, any further ado, I will catch you on the flip side. Wow, this is a weird outro. Bye.